after watching this documentary, yeah. You know, so we reviewed it on our on our podcast, on our cinematics podcast, and my co-host was saying this documentary. He recommends it, but he said this is one of those things that documentaries. He feels like the people who really are invested in nonprofits will be watching it, as opposed to the people who really need to be educated, which is me. And I'm glad. Right, right. So, what would you say to that? Because I, my counter would be just as long as a documentary like Uncharitable exists, that is half the battle. And then it's just about getting it to people like me to understand your documentary and being making it a value added human experience, not just a cinematic experience. So yeah, yeah. I think um, I said to my, so the film was made with donations. Uh, totally, we didn't have any investors, it'd be hard to get an investor to invest in this particularly early on. And I say to them, we're now on the 50 yard line, we finished the movie. Oh, my God, thank God. No, no, now we're on the 50 yard line. The next 50 yards is getting the audience to watch it because it's like there's a tree fall in the forest if there's no one that hears it, you know, I think the strategy is first get the charitable sector to see the movie and champion it. But I call it a movie, you might notice not a documentary, because I think I worked really hard to make it an emotional experience. And I think ultimately it's designed to be about hope so that you have it being, there's an intellectual argument certainly for it, which is an important piece of it to understand it. But really the flow of the movie, if you look at it is people got destroyed, people got destroyed, you get emotional, you get angry, whatever about that, people get destroyed. And you're hearing in the middle of it, some things we can come back to, but then it goes down into the apocalyptic sense of the future. I mean, if you think about it, it's true. What movie have you seen about the future that's hopeful? None. They're all, we're killing each other. We're, you know, we're fighting for gas. We're, it's just a sense of a hopeless future. And I think the future feels for most of us hopeless. Look, climate change. If it isn't climate change, it's the apocalypse coming. It, you have the right and the left both going, the world is going to come to an end. One is climate change and the other is, you know, God is going to come and we're going to have the last judgment day. You know, those are kind of extremes. But more and more, I mean, I look at what is going on around climate change. I was reading a whole big piece about it. It's hopeless now. You know, it's like everything that's homelessness, da 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 well, I don't think it's hopeless at all. In fact, the film really comes about digging into how much changing one's thinking to be charitable, changing one's, and, and a charitable, to be charitable is a bad thing. It's like, you're kind of like, a, you know, a, a wimp if you're charitable. But what if charitable is sexy and kick-ass? What if it's powerful? What if it's got the money to make you understand that we're talking about solving effing incredibly complicated problems, that it's an adventure to do this, that it's not just hanging on by your fingernails, that we put trillions of dollars into programs that are at first carefully shaped by the people in the sector, whether it's homelessness or climate change or water or disease of all these different diseases, put in more money than we're putting in, start to really solve these problems, give the CEOs and the people enough money to really do it the way you would do it for any for-profit business. Elon Musk is a problem as far as I'm concerned, but he's made a great car. That's a for-profit business. Steve Jobs, a little bit nuts, you know, wonderful guy. I loved reading about him. I always had the same Mercedes, whatever, with the same license plate on it. Brilliant machine that it, it profoundly impacted you know, you go you go through history, you see for profits are very valuable. So it's not demonizing that, but it's bringing that same dynamic more into the sector that solves the core problems that we have. I mean, cities are being, San Francisco is a mess because of the homeless situation and the drug problem. It's going to get solved by the people, the 10 million people in the sector who ultimately get treated like they're sexy and they're kick-ass to really solve these problems. And right now I find the sector is very demoralized. They're struggling with money all the time. You know, one of my jokes has been, well, I, what happened with me, I'm a big Hollywood director, whatever. I go back to my hometown, you know, and I'm like the big, the big deal, you know, for my class reunion, I'm like the big deal. When I mentioned a few years ago that I was doing a documentary on charity, the sheen came off. It was like, ah, he's old now and he's just doing meaningless stuff. Well, you know, it's not meaningless stuff. But it showed me the degree to which it's almost an embarrassment to say I'm trying to do good. F that. I, I'm going to be careful with my language, but my language gets like a pirate sometimes because it needs to be sexy and, and tough. 